All right, I'm doing a laminated combing on the shad, but I wanted to show you how you put together a screw together combing, which is what the kits come with. Now, it's pretty straightforward, and I'm not going to do a lot of detail, but I'm going to hit the highlights here. And the first thing is, of course, your pattern's glued down. Now, I've got a couple pieces cut out, but I've got to cut the inside of this one. This is the top ring. And so I take my drill, I go inside the edge here, just drill me a hole big enough to get my drill bit through. I said drill bit, I mean, um, what is that thing? Saw blade. I grab the double dr drill bit. Then, I'll take my saber saw or jigsaw, whatever you prefer to call it, and just cut along the inside of these and get them all roughed out. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you, if you don't have a jigsaw and you've got to buy one, spend the money on a good one. I hated these things with a passion for 20 years, and I found out the reason why I was buying the cheap, I won't mention the name, but the cheap brands, and the difference in, say, a $150 and a $30 one is dramatic. One of the features you won't notice until you use one is the oscillating blade. Now this blade, as it's going up and down, I have the option through a little lever over here to change it so that it's rocking back and forth. And that speeds up your cut dramatically. Uh, I turn it off a lot of times when I'm doing curves and stuff. But again, spend the money on one of these if you think you'll ever use it more than one time. Well worth the money. Now they produce a lot of fine dust, not as bad as the bandsaw, but I have real bad allergies. And I have found that spending the money for a good uh, disposable filter makes a huge difference in the end of the day in how I feel. So let's start cutting this one out. A plywood combing consists of three rings. Your top ring, which is what you actually see, it's a little bit wider than the bottom rings. So when you put a skirt on there, you've got a lip right there to catch on. Now I have to cut it out inside and outside ahead of time. What I've done here, these are the two bottom rings, and I've cut the outsides out and I've left the insides together. And the reason, if you've got a good jigsaw, this won't work if you've got a little cheap one like we were talking about. Get this out of the way. What I do is I screw these two together, cut the two insides at the same time. You're still going to have to sand them and match them to this piece, but it does save a little bit of work. And I don't mention this anywhere in the manual or anything because it's something fairly new I've started doing. I don't know why I never thought of it before. But I just take some drywall screws. These are, let's see, inch and a quarter. Now they will go all the way through, so I have to stop on this one and leave the heads exposed. But I'll eventually screw this to that. I've already lined these up very carefully. Now they don't match up exactly, as I say they're rough, but I've got them evenly so they're consistent all the way around. So, put my screws in, where does I say I'm going to put it right here. Come in here and drill me a hole to start. need to back these out. Now the next step, I like to take this to the belt sander and do the outside edges because they don't line up as I said. So we're going to even these two up so that they're the, so that they made up and then we're going to attach it to the upper ring. Now what I'm saying is we're going to sand the outside of this and I'm going to use my little stationary belt sander. 
You could use a handheld belt sander. You can go back with a rasp and cut these. You can take a uh, just a regular sander. You know, it's going to take longer, but there are ways to do this. But of course, I've got the tools, so I am going to use them. So, first off, dust mask, because this produces a lot of fine dust. And as I say, make short work of that. Next step, take the upper combing ring, do the same thing. Let's sand the outside of it. And there you go. I'm going to take the dust mask off because you can see all the dust in the air. Uh, that makes short work of this. But as I said, you don't have to have one of these. You can do them a lot of other methods. But I make a lot of kits. Keep that in mind. It's not like uh, I'm doing one for myself and will never do another one. I may do another one tomorrow. You know, I never know. So I'm constantly making these. So I need a tool like this. But again, you can use hand sanders. You can use sand paper by hand. That's going to be real slow, but you can. You can use a rasp together. There's a lot of ways to do this. You do not have to have a fancy belt sander and oscillating spindle sander like I've got. But if you're doing a lot of them, you definitely have to have one. Okay, back at the bench. Take this dust mask off. Settle a little. Alright, one thing I didn't bother to show, not that interesting, took the upper ring and I round over on the router the two outer edges. Uh, it's easier to do now than it is once it's attached. Actually the underside edge you cannot do once you put it back together, which is what we're about to do. I'm going to take and put these rings together. And this, there's just a little balancing act here of finding, you know, putting this on here and you just have to keep messing with it because they never line up. They're never going to be perfect. Go through here and find your best alignment. And it's a compromise. But you find what looks the best. Check, see if it looks consistent around the edges. And that looks a little... I guess that's okay. Look a little narrow. Then, drive your screws all the way in. I heard it click. Make sure it hadn't slipped. Get a second one in. And now we're going to go use my favorite tool in the shop, the oscillating spindle sander. And we're going to go back and clean up this inside and make this edge and this edge match up. As I was saying, this is my favorite machine in the shop. It's one I looked for for a long time. It is an industrial quality max oscillating spindle sander. I got lucky. Uh, they're quite pricey. I looked and looked and looked for one, and I found one local at a very reasonable price. Cut over there, well taken care of. He's got all the spindles for it. Love this thing. Got it set up right now with, I believe that's a three inch. Yeah, three inch. And this is like a 40 grit sandpaper. I mean, it looks like somebody grew, glued gravel on here. Very good and very aggressive at taking. Um, a lot of material off fast, so I use it to sand the insides, and then I go back with a good, uh, with a finer grip. And yes, it will take you hide off your fingers in a heartbeat. I learned the hard way.
Don't you hate it when you find out you forgot something and you think you're done? As I was editing this video, I realized that I didn't film an ending on it. But I kind of did, because the last step I showed there where you're sanding the combing was the last step. Uh, I just didn't tie it all together, so that's what I'll try to do here. But as I was showing, we're taking that real coarse grit, we sand all the edges till everything mates up. Then we go back and we take the uh, finer one, smooth it up a little bit. But that's still like an 80 grit, so when you get it, you're going to need a little more uh, sanding, a little more refining to clean it up, but uh, you don't want to pay me to do that. So that's how we make combings. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it, drop me a note and let me know. It's always nice to know what you want to see. And thanks for watching.